Hi, my name's Dan, and this video is the first in a short series of videos that I'm doing on digital logic gates, which are part of digital electronics. So in order to understand what's going on in this video, you probably should have at least some understanding of binary numbers and of the concept of Boolean logic and Boolean algebra. You don't need uh, kind of a de degree level mastery in these subjects at this point, but if you don't actually have a basic understanding of both these things, then what we're looking at in this series of videos will make very little sense to you. You won't see the point of what's going on. So now we're going to talk about logic gates. Uh, what, what are these things, logic gates? So let's step back into our uh, binary and our Boolean logic um, and have a, a quick look at them. So Boolean logic is about statements that are true or false. And Boolean algebra is uh, a branch of algebra uh, where you can write it as if it was maths and it has variables that hold these values true or false. Uh, binary numbers, uh, they use values not one. Um, and in fact, they tend to use several uh, of these values together, combined together to, to give you uh, usually integers. Um, so that's uh, an 8-bit binary number there, which will represent, I can't remember off the top of my head what that number is. Okay, so what are logic gates and how do they relate to, uh, to these two concepts? Well, uh, logic gates are electronics, which use the ideas of off and on. Um, and this is called digital electronics. So we've got these three things together. We've got a Boolean algebra which gives us true or false. We've got binary numbers, which uses one and zero. I've got logic gates, which use on and off. And in fact, we can see there's a kind of equivalence between these three concepts. Um, and they can go together. And I'd say they're interchangeable, not entirely interchangeable, but logic gates can be used to combine uh, the principles of Boolean algebra and binary numbers to give us certain effects in our electronics. Okay, so Boolean algebra gives us processing. Uh, it allows us to make changes to things. Uh, binary numbers gives us numbers. Um, and the logic gates gives us hardware. And in fact, it's fairly obvious that actually maths at its heart is about numbers and processing. So what this means is that the digital electronics can, we can use digital electronics hardware to do maths for us. And this is really, really good news because, first of all, maths, uh, if you're doing repeated calculations over and over and again, can be boring. It's easy for people to make mistakes when they're doing these things. Uh, um, computers can do many, many calculations very, very quickly. And so uh, it makes things fast and potentially more accurate. Uh, a little asterisk there, it depends on how good your programmer is. Um, and computers are there to make our lives easier. That's uh, the kind of mantra that we should be throwing about. Okay, so it turns out that actually, because we can do um, numbers and processing, we can actually use it for a whole load more. And you'll have seen computers using images, computers using sound, and that's done by breaking down the images and the, uh, the sound into binary numbers, which can then be processed by the digital electronics. Uh, so maths equals computing. Uh, in fact, the word compute obviously means to calculate something in maths. And computers are made from these digital circuits. And this here, right now, is the very start of your understanding of how computers work in a physical hardware sense. So how does it work? Right. So. You don't really need to know or understand electrical circuits to be able to follow the stuff that I'm doing in this series of videos. Uh, but just in case you do have some background in this, uh, there is a little bit of explanation I'm going to throw in here. So digital circuits tend to, uh, sorry, electronic circuits tend to go uh, round in a circle. Well, not quite a circle, but there's a, a flow of electricity, especially if you've got a battery here. Uh, flow of electricity from the positive comes around through the wires back to the negative. Um, and a logic circuit is a similar kind of thing. Uh, and in fact, we've got the electronic symbol here for a transistor. You might you don't need to know what they are uh, and what they do to be able to, again, follow this stuff about logic gates. But if you have the background in this, you might appreciate this, this bit. Um, and here we've got, uh, instead of a battery, we've got a positive uh, thing, which is at the top, uh, which is the little diamond. And we've got a, 
uh, the negative is the thing that looks like three three uh, angle lines at the bottom, uh, and they're symbols that indicate the positive and negative flow of electricity. And in fact, we've got uh, we got at the left here we've got inputs, and at the right we've got outputs. And these are wires that will be connected to other things. So in fact, this is just a partial circuit. Um, and these wires will hold what's called a signal, uh, which means uh, electricity coming in, which is a combination of a voltage and a current, and that voltage and current will change over time. And this uh, bit of circuit here will actually perform uh, a Boolean uh, process on these two inputs. It does not AND. Um, so if hopefully you know your, your Boolean stuff and you know what that means. Uh, but as the signal uh, of the input here uh, goes down, the output goes up, uh, depending on the combination of signals. Um, and digital electronics tends to use signals that use two discrete values. Uh, it uses what's called plus 5 volts, which means on, and 0 volts, which means off. And plus 5 volts is the same value that your positive wire has that's coming in and uh, zero is the same uh, value as your ground wire or negative wire, uh, if you want to call it that. Again, this is the electronic details of what's going on. Um, I'm throwing it out there because uh, some of you might understand some of this. If you don't, um, if you're getting lost at this point, don't really worry. Just carry on. Right. So let's get into this. Uh, digital digital logic circuits have their own symbols. So we've got uh, we've used the normal analog logical uh, analog electronic symbols uh, in the previous image. Um, we use special symbols for digital circuits to make them simpler, to make them easier to read, and to make the logic clearer. But they do, at heart, represent actual physical electronic uh, wires and bits of actual semiconductors, silicon, uh, that are going on at the same time. So here's the symbol for uh, what's called a NAND gate. It's the same as the process that we had with the transistors uh, uh, in the previous image. And we've got an input A and an input B and an output. And in fact, generally, we tend to omit the power lines. In fact, almost always, we take those power lines away because every single gate's going to have them, so we can assume them. And so it looks like this. Okay, and there's a range of uh, different gates that are available uh, that you can use. The direction of information flow is important when we're looking at these symbols. So we've got inputs, which on these pictures uh, here, the way these are laid out, they're on the left-hand side. Um, and uh, each gate has one or more input. You can see most of these have got two. There's a couple of those down at the bottom right that have one. Um, and don't worry about what these exactly do at the moment, because the, the rest of this series of videos actually explores each gate in turn and explains what they do. They're quite short videos. Uh, because there's not a lot of explanation that's needed. Um, and each gate has only one output. Um, so, and this is quite important. You might have more than one input, you've got one output. Basically, you're taking some process and you're producing a result uh, at, the out, uh, at the output. They don't have to face left to right, and this can be confusing for people. So I've got pictures of them facing left, facing right, facing up, facing down. The important thing is once you get used to what the symbols are, you will know which are the inputs and which are the outputs. They're generally not labelled, and you have to get used to looking at them and working it out. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I, I said, the different gates do different things on the operations. Gates can be combined together. Um, so here's a, a, a symbol, a diagram of a more complex uh, circuit which involves four different gates combined together and the ones on the left produce outputs that then become inputs from the ones that are further to the right and it's fairly common for digital circuits at least in the simple stages to be drawn left to right like this because in the west we write left to right and that's how we think that's how our brains work um, but um, uh, it can get more complicated than this uh, so we get complex Processing on these values by adding the gates together and combining things, and we can quickly find that a lot of gates are being added together to make much more complicated processing going on. Uh, computers, as we have them these days, are made for millions of these gates, um, and it is possible to get uh, little black silicon chips uh, that have 
uh, individual gates on them, but microprocessors uh, combine many, 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 many gates together in one small piece of silicon that then gets stuck on your board and soldered together with wires to other bits that you've got. Okay, so I've kind of glossed over this uh, thing about binary numbers. I know that uh, uh, we've got zeros and ones, and that's equivalent to our on and off. But how do we handle the fact that logic gates don't have or don't seem to have lots of inputs? And some of our binary numbers are big. I mean, we've seen ones that are 8-bit because that's quite easy for kind of starting to understand. Uh, but how do we deal, for example, with 64-bit binary numbers? So 64-bit binary number will have 64 individual pieces of information, and each one is a 0 or a 1. And if we write it down, it would be quite a long list of zeros and 1s. Uh, and the key or the clue here is where I've said they're individual bits of information. And we use the word bits to in indicate each one of these digits in a binary number. And in fact, what we do is we mostly treat, treat each bit separately. The mostly here is in brackets because for some processing, we need to have some bleed through between the different uh, um, bits in the numbers, for example, adding two together. When you add large numbers together, when you've done uh, long addition and stuff, you'll know that you've got carrying going on, and that's something that happens also in the electronics. Yeah. So what we generally do is we create a circuit that works for one bit of our binary number, and then we replicate that for as many different copies as we need so that we can deal with, uh, so say for 64-bit binary numbers, we'll need 64 copies of that. Uh, when we're considering it and uh, drawing diagrams for it, we often just draw the diagram for one bit and say, make a note somewhere saying we need 64 of these. Um, and that's fine. Okay. So, uh, going on from here, the next few videos in this series are going to be looking at each type of gate, uh, back at that uh, picture that I showed you, all the different types of gates, or most of them. Um, we'll be going through them in turn with a, uh, hopefully, a clear description of what each gate does. Um, and then moving into the next series after that, we'll be looking at how to combine them together to make more complex processing. But that's it from me for now.